Hello all benders and non-benders and welcome back to Avatar Generations. Today we are going over the much anticipated Avatar Kiyoshi. Don't mind the visual glitch here. It, it looks much better most of the time. I don't know why it's doing this. But that is what we are going over is the newest Avatar added to the game. Before I get started I gotta ask though. To anybody whose circles align with mine, where they've played both Genshin Impact and Avatar Generations before, is Avatar Kiyoshi's voice actress the same as Raiden Shogun? Let me know in the comments below if that is the case, if you know. So let's get into her kit here. We've got quite a lot to cover. First is her basic. Deals force damage to one enemy, and then triggers the hidden skill Aftershock, if any buff is removed by the caster. Now, force damage removes two buffs from the target. This is checked against, of course, um, your accuracy versus the enemy's resistance. And then Aftershock, it will actually immediately use this move, not even like an extra turn. She just takes this attack. And what Aftershock does deals nature damage to all enemies, which basically inflicts, in her case, the earth element for one turn, which does ignore resistance. And then increases the defense and crit rate of all allies by 5% for one turn for each elemental effect on the enemy. So if there's two elemental effects on the enemy, that's 10%, 3, 15, and so on and so forth. Theoretically, if you're hitting a full team, that's four right there, not even counting other buffs that, or other debuffs that might be on the enemy. Very important to keep in mind there, a pretty substantial buff. Now, if we take a look at her advanced, it is a three-turn cooldown. Dust Up deals two hits of disruptive damage to one enemy, and then trigger the hidden skill Overwhelming Wind, wind if two or more buffs are present. Now, I am going to give a little distinction here. This one triggers if a buff is removed. Again, really have to keep in mind that accuracy resistance check. This one is only if the buffs are present. So this one can be pretty easy to proc, actually. Disruptive damage. Each hit inflicts one of the following effects. It could be knockdown, increasing their cooldown by one, a 30% turn bar decrease, or 20 reduced focus. And remember, this will happen twice. Again, this, of course, checks accuracy versus resistance, but it will happen twice, so you can get some very cool effects there. And then the hidden skill, Overwhelming Wind, if we take a look here, deals overwhelm damage to all enemies with a 50% chance to remove all buffs from each enemy. Now what overwhelm damage does, this one's very interesting. It inflicts the target with their own element for one turn, we'll get to that in just a second, and decreases their turn bar by 15%. What this means is, let's say you're hitting a firebender with this. It will inflict them with the fire element debuff. If you're hitting an airbender, the air element, so on and so forth. So kind of a variety of debuffs this can inflict depending on the enemy, kind of showing how she is the avatar, master of all the elements, all that good stuff. Again, if this move, uh, dust up, if that extra bit gets triggered by having two or more buffs on the opponent you're hitting, this move will automatically happen. So now we're going to take a look at her passive here, Vengeance. Enter a Vengeance state for one turn whenever an ally is attacked, once per turn, and then all damage dealt by the caster increases additionally based on their defense stat, and their attacks cannot be countered. So we've got a lot to break down here. One, this gives her defense scaling on all of her moves, just straight up. If you use Zinfu, you know how powerful that can be, and you're probably already seeing your, the Platypus Bear in your future. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even going to sugarcoat that. Platypus Bear is going to be the best one for her, no questions asked. But all of her moves scale on defense. She isn't supposed to be countered. Now, in my experience, she does still get countered sometimes. That's bugged at the moment. She's got a couple bugs in a second, but we'll talk to you in a second here. Um, but the Vengeance state is a new state for her. She increases the damage she deals by 50% and has a 50% chance to counterattack when an ally is attacked. So there's a few things to break down. One, straight up damage buff and a hefty one at that. 
never a bad thing. And then a 50% chance to counterattack when an ally is attacked. Now, this is bugged at the moment. She's basically only doing a counterattack once per battle. But we're going to assume that in the future, in the near future, this is going to be fixed and will function properly. On a coin flip, she's going to attack with her basic. And remember, unlike combos, if you're doing a counterattack or a revenge strike like what this is, she does use her actual basic, which means she'll do that force damage. If a buff is removed, she's going to immediately go into Aftershock. A 50% chance for this to happen whenever your ally is attacked. Once it's functioning properly, that is a bit of a caveat. It's not functioning properly at the moment, but once it is, yeah, and even now it's already pretty powerful. But once it's working, oh, this is going to do some damage. And as if it couldn't get any better, we do have some skill masteries on her passive. Master level 2 here, gain increased crit damage for one turn when entering Vengeance State. Now, this seems to apply to everybody, if I'm not wrong. It doesn't explicitly say it, but just from what I've seen in my testing, assuming I've seen it correctly, everybody gets the crit damage. So this is a pretty nice little wide buff here for your team. At Mastery Level 3, remove one elemental effect from each ally when entering Vengeance State. So if you have an enemy inflicted with a nasty debuff that's shutting them down, this will cleanse one of them every time she goes into this state. And then Mastery Level 4 here is a nice little damage buff. Increases the damage of the caster and the ally with the highest attack by an additional 20% when entering Vengeance State. So basically for Kiyoshi, she's going to add up to a 70% damage increase. And the ally with the highest attack, so who, whoever's hitting hard already, they're going to get a 20% buff as well. Extremely powerful effects here. Now, if we're talking about skill ups... Her first breakpoint is actually pretty convenient. Her first breakpoint is definitely level 2. Level 2 actually grants you increased duration to that vengeance state. So if you're like me and you actually got two instead of just one, if you got lucky, if you got, or if you went to pity and you got a couple, that first breakpoint is a very easy one to get to and gives you a noteworthy amount of power. Additionally, um, level 3 is also good to increase the duration of Aftershock. Not a bad idea at all. Um, and then the next breakpoint would definitely be 5 because you get even more Vengeance State. But if you're trying to be, if you're trying to get the maximum usage out of her while still being fairly budget conscious, level 2 is fantastic. You get that second Vengeance State just in case she needs it up longer than you are. Good, but honestly, Vengeance State's so easy to proc, you hardly even need that. Just something to kind of keep in mind. Extremely powerful effects here. I have been using her in Arena. This move actually hits like a truck for some reason. And part of this might just be showing how Zinfu is extremely good because he's on the team and probably does a lot of the carrying. But Kiyoshi puts in some work I've noticed, so some very cool stuff to keep in mind there. If we take a look at her arts, defense, let's, let's not beat around the bush here. You want as much of the defense as humanly possible. You want to go for a defense art. You can get the, there is a new defense set in the timeline shop that you get with timeline currency. I would honestly stick with the original one though for a couple reasons. One, the original one works great. Um, two, if she does die, then... All of her allies get a nice little buff to defense, and the enemies get a debuff to defense. And also, timeline currency is very premium at the moment. And considering you can get a lot of other good stuff, including like 15 event tickets and 15 peace chaos tickets, you really want to save those currency items for other things, namely those tickets. Artifacts really aren't going to be worth it, especially if you don't get a good roll. So honestly... Stick with the defense set that's already in the game. It will not steer you wrong. Additionally, 
you do not want to slack on the resistance. Now, nice thing is here, I do have a pretty decent setup here. I've got four out of six with accuracy and the other two are resistance. I can't decide if I want to sacrifice some of that resistance for even more accuracy. I kind of don't because I do want her to be able to not just get, not just be, you know, a punching bag for debuffs. But she really does rely on accuracy because that basic does need to actu actually remove the buff. So just something to kind of keep in mind there. Do not slack on the accuracy. For whatever support you want to run on the team, I, I mentioned this already, but the Platypus Bear will not do you wrong, frankly. I mean, it's a four star. It's literally free to play in the shop right at this second. Yeah, it, you just, you, you can't go wrong with this thing. Um, now, at the time this video goes live, we will be getting another powerful opponent banner. So this Platypus Bear is probably only gonna be up in the shop for um, adventure points for the next few hours. So if you want him, jump on him. I did get all three copies with adventure points and I do not regret it because this 25% defense boost, it makes her stronger. It makes Zenfu stronger. It's kind of nuts. This thing, this thing blows five stars out of the water. What can I say? Um, I'm not even gonna bother. I mean, if you, if you for some reason had a maxed out Flopsy or something for the crit damage, I guess. But this has the double effect of not only making her damage stronger, but also making her just straight up bulkier, same as Zenfu. So honestly, Platypus Bear is your one and only by a hilariously long shot. Um. Looking at the relics, we do have a little more competition on this one. Her signature relic was the inheritance relic. This one's interesting because it grants increased defense to all allies for two turns. Whenever the opponent uses a multi-hit attack, there's a chance of this happening two times per battle. I am not a huge fan of this relic. Mostly because what this thing does, Iroh can do on a good day. Iroh can grant your whole team tenacity, and then assuming that that tenacity lasts long enough, he can then grant the whole team defense without having to tie it down to a relic. So, yeah, I really don't see a whole lot of use in this un unless you just happen to have quite a lot of it. Um, this is the current event relic, the Jesus, Jesus Journal. It's interesting because it basically just decreases the damage you receive from Exile, Rebel, and Outlaw factions by 25%. Helpful if you're being really bothered by a Fire Nation Zuko or a Kiwok or a Dojo Master. But again, it is kind of a... It's a generalist one that's not always going to apply. Of course, you do have your usual defense relic. Statue of Kiyoshi is... Not bad. Um, the masks are not bad. It did get the buff where it'll only trigger every two turns, but still all right. But honestly, her best in slot is going to be probably the origami flower. This thing, what it does, whenever she enters a positive state, it'll just increase her defense by 50%. And remember, she's going to be entering that positive state very often. So for one turn, she's going to get the increased damage and increased defense. There's really no reason not to use this. You could also give her the Games of War if you kind of splurge on it like I did in the last powerful opponent banner. But I kind of feel this works better on Zenfu because Zenfu actually does get buffs. Whereas Kiyoshi does not consistently grant herself buffs, except in certain situations. And frankly, I kind of like having the origami flower on her with Zinfu being the buffer with the games of war. So my recommendation, the origami flower is the way to go. And yeah, that honestly about sums it up with her. She does some crazy stuff and of course really adheres to the current meta of defensive earthbender units. It is nuts in the arena at the moment. I hope you like earthbenders because there is a lot of them. But that is about all we have for today. We've got some very cool stuff, like I alluded to. 
We're going to have another powerful opponent banner very soon. We also still have to talk about Rangi very soon. So we have no shortage of cool things ahead of us. So with that said, we shall see you next time. Have a good one.